اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Evaluating Reflective Measurement Model Now, in the last step, that is step 1, we assessed the indicator reliability. Now, in this session, we are going to focus on step 2 and 3, that is consistency and convergent validity. Internal Consistency Reliability This is the second step in Reflective Measurement Model Assessment that involves examining internal consistency reliability. One of the primary measures in PLS-SCM is composite reliability, that is Rho C. Higher values indicate higher levels of reliability. Values over 0 0.70 are normally considered reliable. Reliability between 0 0.60 and 0 0.70 is considered acceptable in exploratory research, whereas values between 0 0.70 and 0 0.90 range from satisfactory to good. Now values above 0 0.90 and definitely above 0 0.95 are problematic since they indicate that the indicators are redundant thereby reducing construct validity. So if your values for construct reliability are well over 0 0.95 then these items within your construct are actually redundant. Reliability values of 0.95 or over suggest the possibility of undesirable response patterns, e.g. straight lining, thereby triggering inflated correlations among the error terms of the indicators. Now there is a pattern that you do not require in your responses. Now for example, straight lining would mean that the respondents have selected one single response for each of the indicators. Like for example, they have selected strongly agree for all the indicators in your questionnaire. Cronbach alpha is another measure of internal consistency reliability, which assumes the same thresholds as for composite reliability, that is rho c. A major limitation of Cronbach's alpha, however, is that it assumes all indicator loadings are the same in the population, also referred as tau equivalence. The violation of this assumption manifests itself in lower reliability values than those produced by rho c. While Cronbach's alpha is rather conservative, the composite reliability rho c may be too liberal and the construct's true reliability is typically viewed as within these two extreme values. Now, in order to counter this Cronbach's alpha, which is conservative, and composite reliability, which is too liberal, we've got another reliability coefficient that is rho a. The reliability coefficient rho a usually lies in between the Cronbach's alpha, that is your conservative measure, and your liberal measure of composite reliability. So rho a will, the value of rho a will be between these two measures. Now how do we check for reliability? Now we have already specified our measurement model, we have already estimated our measurement model. Now how do we take out reliability from that particular model? Now we have already summarized the model in this particular object. So you simply type in this in your R program. Okay, let's first have a look how to do it. Let's go back here. We have already done this in the previous session. So I'm going to continue. Let's do summary underscore simple and then the dollar sign and what do I want? I want reliability. Where is it? Here it is. Selected. Now here is your output. Have a look here. Now this is your reliability. Look at this. Alpha values. Rho C. AVE. What is this AVE? We are going to look into this later. Now this is your composite reliability. This is the rho A the reliability that actually counters the criticism on Cronbach's alpha and composite reliability and this value here should be in between these two values. Now is it in between these two values? Yes. Is this in between these two values? Yes. Is this in between? Yes. Is this in between? Yes. Because obviously 0.876 is less than 0.880 and 
0 0.880 is less than 0 0.907. 0.913 yes because 0.912 then you get 0.913 and the greatest value is composite reliability alpha rho c and rho a should exceed 0.7 while ave should exceed 0.5 so what is this here we are going to look into it let's go back to our presentation here so this is how you inspect the composite reliability and other reliability measures the internal consistency reliability values are displayed in the matrix format with row A values in between alpha and composite reliability. Similarly, the results for cron batches alpha and composite reliability are above the 0 0.70 threshold, indicating that all construct measures are reliable. Are they reliable in this case? Yes, they are reliable. Again, we can have our reliability chart as well using plot function. This plot visualizes the reliability in terms of cron batch alpha, row A and row C for all the constructs. Note that the plot will be outputted to the plots panel window in the R studio. So how do you get this plot? It's very simple. You just need to type in this command. Let's type it in. Let's copy and let's put it here. Control V. Let's just select this, run it, and here is your plot. Okay, you can export it as image, as PDF, or you can copy to clipboard. You can copy the plot and paste it anywhere you want. Now let's put it back here. Let's go back to our presentation. Now the horizontal dashed blue line indicates the common minimum threshold level for the three reliability measures, that is 0 0.70. Here it is. And all these constructs are well above the threshold value. Next in measurement model assessment for reflective measures is convergent validity. Now that we have assessed the reliability, the next step is to assess the convergent validity. Whether or not all the items that are measuring a particular construct converge to represent the underlying construct. This is the third step that is convergent validity of each construct. Convergent validity is the extent to which the construct converges in order to explain the variance of its indicators or in simpler terms whether the indicators are representing the underlying construct or not. The metric or the measure that we use to establish convergent validity is called average variance extracted for all indicators on each construct. The AVE is defined as the grand mean value of the squared loadings of the indicators associated with the construct. So what we do is we simply take the square of each of the loadings that we did earlier and then sum the squared loadings. Now once the squared loadings are summed, they are divided by the number of indicators and this will give us the average variance extracted for all the indicators on each construct. Now this has to be done separately for all the constructs in your study. Therefore, your AVE is equivalent to commonality of a construct. The minimum acceptable value is 0 0.50 and AVE of 0 0.50 or higher indicates the construct has the ability to explain 50% or more of its indicators variance. Moving on, how do we see convergent validity? Now we simply run this command that we did earlier and based on this command we will have AVE values for each of the constructs in the study. Now all of them are well over the required limit of 0 0.50. This means that convergent validity for all these constructs is established. This shows that the items are converging to measure the underlying construct. Since AVE is greater than 0 0.50 this means that the construct is capturing good enough variance of its indicators and we can say that convergent validity is established. Now how do we report this factor loading that we saw earlier then the indicator loadings then in the construct reliability and now convergent validity. In order to report this I've got a template here which I'm going to show you now. I'm going to do a detailed video on reporting later, but just a summary, just an introduction for now. So what you do is you start with your measurement model, then you report your factor loadings. Where are your factor loadings? 
here are your loadings here you can write this into a csv file as well as we did earlier just simply use the write.csv function where x is your object that you want to write let's say we want to write this and the next thing is your file where do you want to write it let's say i want to write it into loadings.csv now let's run it okay so what is the error now we have to understand our errors now we have to remember whenever we are mentioning the file the name has to be in inverted commas now you can run the command and there is no error now where is this write-up of ours let's go to the folder now look at this loadings.csv and do we have the loadings in here here are the loadings just copy it and paste it into this particular document or wherever you want to paste it now in the next session we are going to look into step four that is discriminant validity as part of evaluating reflective measurement model thank you very much